Let's bring in a retired police sergeant from Nashville, Tennessee, Melissa Pinkleton. She's with us for another hour and joining our conversation, criminal defense attorney Michael Gottlieb. He's in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Michael, welcome. Good, uh, good to see you. The, uh, nice to what do you think of this witness overall here in the penalty phase? They're doing anything they can to save their client's life. And what I got out of it is like, all right, well, Border Patrol guys are big, tough men, and they have this horrible culture of man-man stuff. Um, does it move the ball, Michael, in your opinion, in, in terms of saving his life? You know, as far as this testimony goes, it's not the most powerful mitigation testimony that I've ever seen. And, and that's certainly what we're looking for. You really want to find something that conveys to the jury that this is a sympathetic person who we need to have some, you know, remorse for, for the actions that they took. And I'm not getting that from this witness. What you are getting is perhaps an excuse as to why he had an extramarital affair, as, as to why he had text messages that were abusive to um, the mother of his child. Um, so they're, they're perhaps putting together circumstantially bit by bit a case that will lead to mitigation. But I agree with you at this point in time, they really haven't moved the ball that far down the uh, field. Melissa, you, you've been in these environments in law enforcement, and he went on to say this is common in many different uh, areas of law enforcement. Does that jive with your experience? Uh, the way he's portraying it, it in a very negative, negative light, I, I don't agree with. There's 5% females in Border Patrol. Well, that's because only 5% of females met the qualifications and passed the tests, you know. There's only a 12 to 15% law female law enforcement in general. And it typically military and police are masculine environments. And it's funny because my husband and I joke, while I'm feminine, I have a lot of masculine traits. And so when I was working with uh, Metro National Police Department and I was a police officer and then a sergeant, you know, I was one of the boys. And that's not a bad thing, you know, because you have that camaraderie and you have that trust and intricacy there. So I'm waiting for him to say something Thing that's going to try and tie in what he is saying to and this is why he killed his wife or his his mistress and his baby and I'm not hearing it so far everything that he that he's mentioning okay great it, it is well known there's a high rate of divorce a high rate of um, infidelity alcoholism suicide it's very very well known but the whole the fact that it's a masculine environment and he talked about the language we cuss that is just part of the culture is we use a lot of, uh, we cuss a lot and we joke a lot and our humor tends to be a little bit dark. And that is a coping mechanism that we have amongst us because of all the things that we see. And I know a lot of ordinary citizens don't understand that, but please know that like it's a coping mechanism. And yeah, we, we talk like truckers and sailors and, and luckily I'm able to tone it down when I'm here on court TV so that I don't get kicked off and never invited back again. Give me a beer, will you, Melissa? Uh, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I, but you, you don't you don't um, you don't pull 18 month old boys out of a stroller and, and stab them to death, and that's where that you're talking about that. Where's that connection? Where's that? Um, and and we'll see. I, I, and the judge basically said that that's not happening. The defense says we're not going to make that connection. We're just trying to broaden everybody's knowledge in terms of who he is and his upbringing. So we'll get a break in here. We'll see what they do on cross right after this.